Welcome to the Startup Showcase. I'm your host, Scott Katoon, and this is the Technory Podcast Live from WGN Radio, where Chicago's top tech founders and entrepreneurs come to share their story. Sitting next to me now, we've got Dr. Alex Liao and Professor Philip Yu from UIC. Uh, we're going to talk about Bi Effect. Welcome to the show, first off. Thank you. Of course. Welcome. Uh, so this is an interesting topic. You've got research kit that's designed to sort of unobtrusively understand the mood and cognition of people with, is it just bipolar or is it, you know, all, all together? Like, is it just specifically bipolar disorder? So for now, we are looking at bipolar disorder, but we believe the technology can be used in other psychiatric disorders as well. What, like, give me an example of a, a couple of, of disorders and how, like, how would they tie, how, how do they work similarly, I guess? As a person who's not a doctor and knows very little other than sometimes I'm a little bit uh, bipolar. <laughs> so as a very concrete uh, example, sometimes, um, for example, Parkinson's, it is primarily a motor disorder. However, as the disease progresses, a lot of times they also exhibit mood symptoms. And as we know with Parkinson's, there's also this, this resting tremor. And uh, if we can use a similar technology, uh, such as by effect, then we can actually also sample the tremor component of their motor symptoms as they continue to use their phones. So how, how does by effect as a whole, like how does by effect work? And then my follow-up question to you on that would be, how did you, like, were you studying this specifically? Like, how did you come up with this exact thing, I guess, is the, the trick? Um, that's, a, that's a great question. Um, basically, the core component of BioEffect is a custom-made keyboard that replaces the standard iOS keyboard and tracks all keystroke metadata in the background as the user continue to use the phones. So that's sort of the core technology. Uh, in addition to the keyboard, we are also tracking information such as accelerometer and gyroscope and uh, the touch force, um, et cetera. How did you determine, though, like, I mean, what loses me on this is how did you determine that that has some sort of a tie to the way that people's brains work? I guess that it's like, it doesn't surprise me in one regard, right, that like the way that people operate and use the technologies and tools, whether it's physical or technology, uh, that that has a it's either a direct correlation or it directly correlates with the way that their brain functions. But to see, to have seen past that enough to know that there's there's a way to use the iOS keyboard that we use every single day, like 23 hours a day. How, how does that, like, how did you determine that that would be something that you could use to, to determine a person's brain activity? So essentially what we're doing is we try to perform a neuropsychological testing without actually having to test again you using a very concrete example uh, when someone is in the middle of a manic episode what we see is that they have diminished self-monitoring and uh, using a layperson's language self-monitoring is basically uh, making sure you are not acting in an uh, impulsive way so you can imagine if someone someone is not able to self-monitor, um, it's also going to show up as they type because they will not be able to check their, their typos. They will yep. be sending messages out before they have a chance to, you know, fully making sh make sure this is what they want to say. So, like, you know, not to minimize this, obviously, because it's a very serious deal, but I always not, like I said, not, not making jokes of anything, but at the same time, we used to make kind of a joke of our friends that would lose their, their cool and get very upset, and we would get these, like, long strings of text messages, and it would just be insane. Like, just totally crazy stuff that they're writing us, and it was not, it was not sensical, it wasn't in a sentence, it wasn't properly written, it was just total, we call it like manic, it was just like a manic posting. And I guess what you're saying is that, like, literally, we weren't joking, that was real, That's, that was a non-self-monitored moment that they were letting happen, apparently, basically. Definitely, definitely. And um, we also use very advanced machine learning to build mathematical models that allow us to essentially infer a person's internal state without having to actually uh, ask them too many questions. And when you try, so like comparatively, I guess this is one of the solutions why this is so unique. Comparatively, when you ask a person what, you know, what they think is their problem or what they think they're dealing with, usually 
uh, they don't respond necessarily truthfully or they respond not untruthfully, but they respond with a bias that is obvious, right? They don't they don't want to be perceived in a certain way. So they they say whatever they think you want to hear them say. And and then you can't really get a very good read on what the problem is. And so, of course, it goes untreated. Yes. Uh, and now you're you've come up with something from a tech standpoint where the person literally doesn't th their activity says everything that there needs to be said, basically. Yes. Very cool. Uh, how long have you guys been working on this? Like, what, uh, is this a fairly new or um so we've been working on this for about two years now and again i really want to emphasize that we are using really very advanced machine learning oh yeah you have to be i yes. mean this is like super cutting edge yeah very cool and is this a, is a uic project specifically or did it come out of uic and now it's sort of yeah, you know, how, how how does it tie back to the university and students and so forth? Yeah, because in the in UIC, you know, uh, we have a, a, a big uh, big data and social networking group. So basically, we uh, build up a uh, very sophisticated uh, data mining in technology. So this including the like deep learning. You know, so we can uh, have a very deep understanding of the of the of the user's behavior for example you no know, when alex talked about the keystroke drive, we are not really looking at the text yeah you know, they, that involves privacy detail we are just they are just looking at the the behavior yeah. so we are so in, instead of looking at the, uh, at the uh, correct uh, text characters uh, we are looking at for example or oh, the the speed they are typing yep. uh, the, uh, the distance between the keystroke or things like that so it's uh, indirectly through so data mining, we can discover this kind of behavior. Also, we are not just looking at one type of, of signal. We are collecting multiple types of signals. So it's not just as keystrokes, right? They also like this move, movement. So you, from this accelerometer, right? So all those information. So you can check on like this, like if, if you're, we're talking about a phone. So first off, the cool thing is you've got UIC, yeah. which is a, a school that is in downtown Chicago that's spread all over the place. So people could literally... You, you have a lot of targets that you can, not targets, subjects. That you, <laughs> man, I'm good at this. Uh, you have a lot of people that you can use as sort of a test for this and, and to accumulate a lot of data. What you brought up, which is really interesting, is that it's not the actual reading of the text messages. It's the actual keystroke and the behavior and the mannerisms behind it, which I think is, like, if you sit back and think about it, that makes perfect sense. Um, but it's just also really great because it gets rid of any biases and like any one of like, you know, that's your interpretation of that. I didn't mean that. Like, there's none of that stuff. It's just literally like, no, no, you were typing incredibly fast and, and not very proficient. Um, and then the, the other part you added was that you can actually track their behavior from the standpoint of movement. So I assume like on the phone, like my iPhone has activity. I know how many steps I'm taking and where it's all going. Are you guys able to track into that to know that this person has become much more fidgety? They're walking about more, they're pacing, whatever it might be. Or how, how does the, how do you track that? Uh, but basically, you no. Know, from the from the phone, you can get all this kind of data. Now we are just using it to see that uh, the uh, the way when the typing is doing the movements, right? Yep. But all the all all other type of information can all be included. So so we are just building up this uh, kind of capability. So actually, in this big data era, we can collect all types of data, right? So the challenge really to, to fuse all this type of different type of data together, so we get a. Uh, 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 more comprehensive picture, right? Just like you have, uh, you go into the hospital, they have, uh, they collect all type of signals, right? All, all those signals, each of them has a particular meaning. For example, if you do a, uh, you can have a radiogram, you can look at the heartbeat, you can look at the, uh, the, the temperature, you can, all, every signal has some unique meaning. But if you put them together, then you have a better understanding of the person's behavior. It just blows my mind. We talk about IoT fairly frequently. We've had a handful of IoT guests uh, and the last Internet of Things I'm speaking of that that have been on our show in the past couple of weeks. And I, I think what's really fascinating is we're always talking about sort of what I, what I will call, um, I don't even know what the right word is. I know we don't talk about passive data. We talk a lot about intentional data. We talk a lot about like this, I know when I input this what the purpose is. I know that I'm driving my car and I went on Google Maps and I wrote where I'm going. And I know that there's data there and that I'm going to try to park my car so Spot Hero is communicating. And there's all these different things that are happening. Um what we don't really think about, I think, is is the passive data here, which is all of my activity on that phone that was the data I was thinking of was also being collected and farmed for usage, which is me walking around the city, me getting up, standing up versus sitting down. My phone tells me on my little watch here that I've need I've been sitting all day. It's time to stand up. It knows like everything about us. And I wonder, you know, 
there's obviously the good of this, which you guys are, are working on now. The negative, I think, in, in some of these things is that when you market to people, we now know so much about their behavior and like what gets them going at any given time that you know that if I get me excited, I'm going to start texting faster or make more mistakes, and then you can cater to that too. It's just very fascinating stuff. Yeah. So I think certainly, as you alluded, that uh, uh, there is some privacy concerns, right? But uh, but that's the price you have to pay, you know, in order to get some other things out. Right? Well, it's that's like, the price we all paid when we yeah. got when we decided to get addicted to our little devices here. <laughs> that you know that at some point, this kind of and, you know, like I said, it's probably actually worth it in the end because this kind of information, I think, um, and we've had other people here not on the tech side talking about. Uh, you know, special needs as well as solving problems for cancer, as well as solving problems for those who have, uh, you know, whether it's bipolar disorder or whatever it might be. Um, I think it's probably a good thing, even though the privacy is a question, that we can use the information that comes as a byproduct of our human behavior to be able to solve some problems that I think that when you previously we would have had to watch you all day long, and that's very hard to do and watch you in a natural habitat, which is even harder to do. Uh, and then, of course, lastly, by asking you to fill out a survey, which you lie on. <laughs> yes. It doesn't work at all. So, you know, this this might only be the only way we ever actually address how to solve some of the problems that, that challenge the normal human, right? Mm -hmm. And we're also hoping to use this information as feedback for the users. Yeah. So they learn something about their brains. Uh, so it's not just for the doctors. We are hoping that something like this can be eventually used uh, by the patients themselves. Yeah, I mean, I, I honestly, this is probably, again, I don't mean it to be, but kind of minimizing things, but I could see when I get myself into uh, a bit of a, what I call going into the red zone, where I like, I can't even see anything, it's just white out. Uh, very pissed off, they would say. <laughs> uh, when that's happening, I will write things, and I say things to people, and immediately I'm like, wish I have been doing that. <laughs> And I feel like something like this, like not as important to the level of, of medical uses, but I think something like this could actually send you a, an alert like, you know, your pattern of everything would suggest that you're not in a very, you know, you're not self-aware right now. Yes. Your self-monitoring is taking a break, <laughs> which, you know, I think would probably be, a, I mean, I could totally see that. Like, that'd be a great app to have. Yeah, that would be great, right? If you know you are in a wrong mode, right? Then maybe we should stop you from well, something. We, we do it for sleep. We do it for we do it for not getting up and exercise. We do it when your heart is is going too fast. Like, yeah. why not do it for when you're about to do something ridiculous? <laughs> uh, where do people go to learn more about this and sort of get involved with this and and just keep an eye on Bioeffect? Yeah, we have uh, some some paper uh, publishing coming out from conferences or things like that. So I think people can learn from that. Very cool. And uh, we have a website as well. It's uh, bioeffect.com. This B I A F-F-E-C-T dot com. Very cool. Thank you guys so much for coming in. Definitely. This is awesome. Very fascinating conversation. Uh, you can watch this episode and more at technori.com. Download the podcast on iTunes and stay connected by following us on Facebook and Twitter at Technori, or you can follow me at Katoon. Boom, that's a wrap. Right.